attribute it all just to psychedelics? Well, I, 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 um, I don't. But I attribute a lot to psychedelic culture. And it's really the culture itself of psychedelia that... that so, so what is psychedelic culture beyond, psych, you know, just, you know, acid? It's underground comics, it's op art, it's in the art world. It's a lot of these things that I'm showing. Um, during the process of researching the book, I, I, I read a lot about the counter, well, the counterculture in general. I, I mean, Abby Hoffman was a total acid head. I'm not saying he wouldn't, there, there's, a, there's a quote that, um, uh, from a guy who wrote about the influence of psychedelics on, on music in the 60s. His name is Nick Bromell, and he said, you may not have taken acid, but America did. And, and I talked to lots of people whose work you might think, that looks really psychedelic, who never did drugs. And some people, I'm sure there are lots of people who did lots of drugs whose work doesn't actually look particularly psychedelic. So, so yeah, I agree with you, and I'm not doing a very good job of kind of I th but I think that there, there's something, like all the social conflicts that were going on, um, you know, civil rights for all kinds of groups, um, uh, the war concern that, um, the distrust of the leadership, all these things can account for a lot of it. But, um, I think psychedelic drugs and the resultant psychedelic culture, uh, which produced the Beatles and Bob Dylan and, and, and an extreme, like a kind of culture that, a mass culture, not an not a isolated cu a culture like the art world was. Uh, it not only changed ways of thinking, but it generated a kind of uh, intensity of, Action. I mean, the, the the Occupy Wall Street thing is nice, but it's not nearly as extreme as what was. A friend of mine, my friend Judy Braun, says they need more drugs. You know, they don't they don't have enough fuel. They don't they're not crazed enough, and um, and and there's also like there, there's the fact that the economy was very generous at at a certain point in time. But the, the, I, I think you have to see psychedelic culture as a kind of religious movement. And it had the sort of frenzy and energy that those kind of movements have. And, and all kinds of people got caught up in it. The first time I saw a, uh, I think people always ask me, where'd you get this idea? And, and I was thinking on the way up, when I first visited here at SUNY, there was a faculty show up. It was 1976, and uh, uh, our friend Mark Greenwald had a painting in the show. I, I didn't know him, I'd never seen his work. It was the painting Bright Promise. And my wife Gail and I were looking around. We came to this painting, and I was just like, I I'd never seen anything like it. And I said, that looks just like what things look like when you're on acid. <laughs> and it, it really did at the, at the time, this kind of crystallized uh, re realism. And uh, later I did get to know Mark and I asked him if it was inspired by uh, a psychedelic drug. And he said, no, not at all. He'd never taken them. But so, so something was in the air, you know, that really, really powerful memes were zooming around. And, and the sense of creative possibility that, you know, it's undeniable that everything, everything radical that is happening in art now happened in the 60s. 